Hello, Gundam fans. Welcome back to Otaku on a Budget. Today, we'll be taking a look at another excellent product from Harder and Steenbeck, the Grafo T1. Stick around. Now, the Grafo line by Harder and Steenbeck is specifically designed for doing uh, close-in detail work. What we have here is the Grafo T1 which comes with a 0.15 millimeter nozzle, a uh, very small 1 ml uh, cup, uh, which gives you a clear view down the length of the airbrush when you're trying to get in close to your work surface. And it also features a very unique uh, trigger system. Now let's open it up and take a look. It comes in this nice um, aluminum case with a few accessories here. Looks like you get um, your uh, blowback cap and some instructions uh, showing the different parts of the airbrush, uh, how to clean it, uh, how to troubleshoot. It's written in uh, different languages, so really handy. Uh, now the airbrush itself is a nice nickel chrome it says grapho right there it looks to be laser etched and on the other side we have a harder and steam bag made in germany with a serial number and as i mentioned we have a very small one ml cup right here so you can uh, really see your work down the length of the airbrush um, harder and steam bags airbrushes usually come with um, the quick disconnect uh, so if you have the the standard attachment you can just plug that in or if you don't want to use that then you can simply screw that off and um, attach your uh, 1 8 air hose directly to the airbrush now on the back here we have um, an aluminum uh, handle it's very light very lightweight and it also features a uh, memory setting uh, needle limiter so just pull that out and you get full movement on the trigger and then you can push that back in and it goes back to your original setting so similar to what we have with uh, the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity uh, albeit a, a different design and this one's blue of course um, now the front here is uh, very similar to Harder and Steenbeck's uh, Evolution airbrush uh, in fact, uh, let me take off the back end here and show you what the nozzle looks like. Now the Grafo, the Evolution, um, the Infinity, and I think uh, the Kolani also features um, a similar nozzle design. So it's a self-centering nozzle, as you can see. Uh, it's got a PTFE seal right here on the back to ensure a good seal between the body of the airbrush and the nozzle itself. And uh, the air cap has um, air channels machined into the side here, three air channels that direct the air um, from the air outlet on the side there all the way towards the tip. And that gives this airbrush a really good um, atom atomization properties. Now let me just screw that back in and reattach the handle. Now the interesting thing about this airbrush is actually the trigger itself. Now it's a little different in look from what we have with the Infinity, but uh, it actually has a very uh, unique uh, action. You don't have to uh, depress the trigger downwards to get the air going. It's just one movement to the back and that releases the air and paint at the same time. Now, uh, unlike other airbrushes where you have to, uh, double action airbrushes where you have to press down for air and pull back for paint, now this one does it simultaneously, automatically. So just pull that, uh, a slight pull will release some air and some paint and all the way back will release the, uh, open up the air valve and open up the, the, uh, the paint. So 
Let's load it up with some paint and let's see how, how uh, that trigger performs. All right, so I've loaded the Grafo up with a little bit of uh, black lacquer paint. Thin down, uh, this is very thin down. It's a, since we're using a 0.15 millimeter tip, um, I had to thin down the paint. I think about 30-70 paint thinner ratio. And let's test it out. So like I mentioned earlier, um, there is no, you don't have to depress the trigger downwards. It's just a one uh, fluid movement to the back and that releases both the paint and air. So, uh, very nice atomization here, we're seeing. Gives really, really good control. And it almost functions like um, um, a pistol grip uh, airbrush where a slight pull only releases air and you can almost feel um, where it changes. Um, try to get closer to the paper here. Get a finer line. really good atomization let's see um, I'm gonna take off the um, needle cap so we can see um, just how fine we can get that line okay so I've taken the um, needle cap off and let's see how fine a line this airbrush can produce. Really, really nice. I'm sure um, in a more experienced hand you can get an even finer line than this. Down to hairline thin possibly. Let me just get a close up of that. really really good control with this airbrush and it doesn't feel um, strange at all to not have to press down you get used to it pretty quickly Really nice. Now, of course, uh, you wouldn't expect much of uh, coverage with um, a 0.15 millimeter tip, but what you can expect is that um, even if you're uh, spraying from quite a distance here, I'm at, I'm at about two inches away, and I still get a pretty um, thin spray pattern. is about an inch away. Really, really good for detailing. No overspray. And we've been spraying for about five minutes now and still haven't detected any kind of uh, tip dry on that needle. Be nice. But if you're used to um, an airbrush with a bigger paint cup, something with a lid, you definitely have to get used to um, keeping the airbrush upright or straight down like this so it, you don't, don't splash paint out over the side right here. But yeah, 
spray is really really great wouldn't expect um, anything less from a quality airbrush by Harder and Steenbeck really nice Now, um, as we mentioned earlier, this airbrush does have um, the quick setting um, handle. So if you wanted to um, flush the airbrush out, just pull that, uh, pull the button back here. And when you go in and go back to your original setting, just press that back in. Pretty good. So just based on this quick test, it looks like the Harder and Steenbeck uh, Grapho is a really good detailing airbrush. I, I definitely use this um, for any tight in uh, tight close in work. Um, it offers really good control with with a unique uh, trigger action, which releases both air and paint on pullback. Um, I actually like the shape of the trigger button on this one compared to the Infinity. This actually feels more comfortable on the fingertip. And of course, it also offers the uh, quick set handle, so you can just push that in and you get to limit the uh, pull back on the trigger. And then, if you have to flush the airbrush, just pull that back, flush the airbrush, push it back in, and you can get back to work uh, at your original setting. Um, atomizes paint really well. The paint cup is, of course, uh, smaller than usual because it is designed. Uh, for doing detail work, so you'd only have uh, a few drops of paint in there for doing, uh, getting uh, really close. Uh, it offers the same uh, front end design as the Hardin Steenbeck Evolution. It, al it also uses the same kind of nozzle. Uh, this one comes with a 0.15 millimeter, which I believe is the smallest in the market at this time. And yeah, overall, I could definitely recommend this airbrush for doing uh, any kind of detail work. Uh, be it with uh, mecha kits or miniatures, really, really good airbrush. Uh, offers really good balance in the hand without the cup sticking out up here. You can see right down that the airbrush. Um, but if if you do if you do need uh, a bit more capacity, uh, Grafo the Grafo line also comes in the T2, which is uh, a, side, uh, a side feed model, and uh, T3, which is. Uh, also a side feed model, I believe, but with a, a much larger plastic cup. And the T2 also comes with a, a bayonet type attachment for the, for the uh, side feed cup. I believe it comes with four cups. So if you had to, do, uh, if you had to switch out colors often uh, during work, then this is definitely, definitely something you want to check out. So yeah, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you again next time for the next airbrush review.